Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah everyone. I'll just jump right into this. Uh, Alhamdulillah, today we're blessed to have all of these great individuals, activists, people who are passionate about bringing about positive change to uh, the community and the nation. It's truly inspiring to have um, these individuals among whom are absolute superstars, uh, people that we're very proud to have as members of our community and as allies and as people that we can work with to advance not only the interests of our community but um, the wider uh, American community around the nation. So uh, please recite aloud salawat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad for them. Allahumma <laughs> salam. So again, this is a message from Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Taqi al-Mudarrisi that I am delivering on his behalf. His son was supposed to grace us with his presence. However, he wasn't able to make the flight, so I am honored to do this. Muslim communities in the West safeguarding our values and positive integration. Respected scholars and community leaders, civic and political activists, Honorable guests and, att and attendees of the Universal Muslim Associ Association of America, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. From the Islamic Seminary in the holy city of Karbala, I send you greetings of peace and prayers for prosperity. I also send you the blessings of Imam Hussein, a man who stood up for the cause of justice, freedom, and godly principles and became a legendary martyr in that cause. A man who treated his dear son the same loving way as the black Christian slave who died defending Hussein on the plains of Karbala. His majestic shrine here in the holy city of Karbala is thus the focal point of over 20 million people who participate in the biggest annual pilgrimage known as Arba'in. The world is now a global village and communities are more connected than ever before. No matter how many walls we build, there will always be more bridges that connect us. For better or for worse, we are all in the same boat. So we need a clear vision for the future and robust theories that help tackle our common challenges. To Muslims in America, I say first, we must ask ourselves, who are we? Are we aliens living in a foreign land or are we part and parcel of this nation? Do we abandon our identity or do we remain attached to our home countries? Do we engage in the internal affairs of those far away regions and live in isolation, shielding ourselves from the host culture or do we adopt this country as our permanent abode? The Prophet has famously said, خَيْرُ الْأَوْطَانِ مَا حَمَلَكْ the best home is the one that provides for you. And since this country has provided for you opportunities not afforded to you elsewhere, then you must believe that it will forever be your home. But what about our religion and the big role that it plays in our lives? Do we hold on to everything in it as it is practiced in Muslim countries? What about certain rites and rituals which may be unsuited to this environment? These are questions we must, we must address or risk losing our identity and values. For most people, religion has been meshed with culture. And while culture has its value, it is separate from religion. While culture is subject to change, faith is divine and sublime. Even within the framework of religion, we must define priorities and make a distinction between what is important and what is more important. Thus, we can prioritize and if must be, sacrifice the lesser for the greater. In short, there are rules and then there are cardinal rules. A hadith states, Man bil muhim al -ahem. Whoever gets occupied by things that are important will risk losing that which is even more important. Between these distinctions is a very fine and delicate, delicate line because every country has its own unique conditions and evolving norms. 
but jurists have the ability to do so with God's help. Focusing on the family unit, education, and community is key. We must empower our women and provide them with every resource to take their rightful position, not as passive participants, but leaders in our common struggles. Seeking inspiration from the lives of such legendary heroines as Lady Zainab, who challenged the most vile tyrant of her day, shaking his throne and destroying his evil empire with little more than her voice. Not only should we promote the value of community gatherings on Fridays and Eids, but to galvanize community members for positive social, economic, and political change. We must foster cooperation at every level, helping those in lower socioeconomic stages to reach higher and become productive members of society. We must work toward establishing religious seminaries in the United States, which would produce indigenous faith leaders, and in the long term, even jurists or maraja, who can crystallize a vision for the future compatible with the community's needs and unique qualities. These scholars would maintain a close tie with their counterparts in the major seminaries and bring the world of religious scholarship to a modern Western context. In short, I implore the Muslim community to strive for positive integration on all levels of life in the United States, culturally, politically, and economically, while maintaining our values and faith traditions in line with the teachings and examples of the Ahlul Bayt. We must engage with the wider community. You must engage with the wider community, the Grand Ayatollah says. Your neighbors, co-workers, classmates are members of the human family. Instead of being an indignant minority, lead the charge to improving the lives of everyone around you and make a positive change. Prophets and divinely appointed apostles never came with the intent of ruling over people, but to serve them with social justice. Even when they did reach positions of authority, they refused to use those positions for personal gain. When he was chosen as leader of 50 of today's countries stretching from Morocco and the western tip of Africa to the Russian Republic of Dagestan and the heart of Asia, in which, which was a global superpower that had defeated both the Roman and Persian empires, Imam Ali moved from his native city of Medina to the capital city of Kufa. In his first public address as supreme ruler, who had every opportunity to do what as he desired. He said that I have come here with only two shirts and my mule. If at the end of my tenure I leave you with anything more than that, then I have betrayed you and that I will never do. He also instructed his governors to listen to the people, consult them on policy matters, and treat everyone with justice and equity irrespective of race or creed famously declaring the statement now etched across history, people are of two kinds, either your brothers in faith or your equals in humanity. He refused to have bodyguards, making himself accessible to everyone. A Jewish man once came to Medina seeking an audience with the ruler. To his surprise, he was pointed in the direction of a man resting under a tree. No bodyguards, no security detail, just an old man lying in the shadow of a date palm. Astonished, the man said to Imam Ali, your justice is your security. And it is why you have no fear of being assassinated. He had enemies, surely. As you would if you radically sought to challenge the status quo. Enemies who would insult him to his face. Imagine that. They would insult him to his face, but he let them be so long as he was their sole target and citizens were safe. But perhaps the most notable aspect of Imam Ali and Imam al-Ridha's system of government was his unwavering commitment to the poor, the voiceless, the minorities. He lived the life of the poorest of his citizens so he could empathize with them and not be swayed by the hypnotizing allure of power and money. Good gold and silver, he would say, should find another person to deceive, not me, not Ali. 
the authority that I have got is to me worth less than the mucus of a sneezing goat, he would say, unless I can use it to restore justice for those oppressed. It is these legendary stories of moral courage that have immortalized Imam Ali and Imam al rida such that we continue to be inspired by them 1400 years after their passing. In a toxic climate characterized by ignorance and intolerance, the world needs examples like his and more leaders willing to resist egoistic temptations and upholding universal values of justice, compassion, love, and equity for all. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.